welcome back to another Mac Reacts. Clearly I've lost my voice again. I'm not sick, there's nothing going on. My dogs were just acting like a-holes one day and I yelled at them a lot and <clears throat> here we are. Another point of news is obviously my hair is once again turquoise. No, I don't wanna talk about how much I let it get faded before. Let's just move on. <laughs> Today, we're going through some more malicious compliance stories. And if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five times a week, every single week. Now, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this first story. Okay, this is called Practice Don't Stop for Nothing. And I have a feeling they're gonna regret that. <laughs> This says, back in high school, I was on the wrestling team for a while. I was not that great, but I did my best and always showed up on time and ran all the drills as asked. There was this one guy on the team who everyone hated because he tended to play dirty even when wrestling with teammates. Coaches didn't seem to mind much because he won a lot. Boys will be boys and whatnot. I hate that phrase. Well, we were gearing up for a big tournament and I knew practices were going to start getting a lot more intense. So I tried to cheer myself out by eating several candy bars beforehand for the sugar rush. Yo, wrestlers do wild things to their diet to like make weight to, it's crazy. Once we got going though, things did not sit well. As soon as I started sweating, I started really sweating. I felt awful. My stomach was turning over and over like a washing machine, just a real wreck inside. Yeah, not, not surprised. <laughs> I told one of the coaches I felt sick and he brushed it off saying I was trying to get out of practice and avoid having to wrestle with the guy I mentioned above. Which, okay, if, if he is the type of student and wrestler that is always there at every practice, why would you accuse him of just trying to brush off practice? Like, wouldn't you think like maybe there's something going on since he is trying to get out of practice? And if you think he's trying to get out of practice to avoid wrestling that other D-bag who takes things too seriously during practice, maybe you need to have a conversation with him. Hello? I didn't mind getting out of that, of course, but I was really sick. I pleaded with the coach, but he told me the only way to get better was to tough it out and finish practice. Ah, is that coming from his medical degree? His years of studying biology and human anatomy? Is that, is that where he got this information from? Must be, right? Some BS coach nonsense about earning the right to feel better through effort. You know what, why don't you go tell a cancer patient that they just need to put a little more effort in and they'll feel better. So, um, well, I did what he said, got back into it. As soon as I grappled with the dirty teammate, well, I made him extra dirty, if you catch my drift. Big mess all over the mat and on him. I stopped wrestling after that season. You wanted me to give it 100%, 110% coach? I gave it 125 all over your favorite player. <laughs> that was, I mean, karma, because karma is my boyfriend. Karma is a god. <laughs> okay, I'll stop quoting Taylor Swift. But no, really, I mean, like, what what is wrong with these coaches? Like, clearly, like, you're not a father, or if you are, you're not a very good father, because it's very easy to know your players, know your kids, like know that this isn't the type of kid that just tries to get out of practice. And you know what, as a coach, if there was a kid trying to get out of practice, I would be like, then just go. I don't want anyone here who doesn't wanna be here. Why would you force a kid to be at a wrestling practice? It's just so dumb and I hope those coaches had to clean up after that kid and I hope he felt better after getting all that up and out of his tummy. <laughs> well, I wanna know what you think about that one in the comments and let's get to the next story. Okay, this one says, oh, I'm not allowed to clean up early. Have it your way. Uh, I can feel the malicious compliance just seeping through the computer already. This says, I am a master's student who works as a TA for a class of 60 students. It is a lab course, so there is a ton of setup and cleanup. I usually end up working an extra hour or two past the end of lab, which I get paid for, but it does mean I go home really late. So I started tidying up once most of the students were gone. There is another TA and the professor to answer questions. I did this for a few weeks until I missed a student's question. The professor yelled at me and embarrassed me in front of the student for not doing my job. The other TA was on 
on his phone and the professor was standing at the front not doing anything. He told me to absolutely not clean up until all the students were gone. <sighs> Don't you love when people can't do their own jobs and so they yell at someone else about not doing their job when they're really doing everyone's job? It's funny how that works. We had one student that always stayed over an hour later than everyone else. The next week, the student was the only one left in the lab for an hour past the end of lab. The other TA was helping him. I stood there not lifting a finger until she left. I took my time tidying up. The other TA is useless and was barely helping. Two hours passed, now 9 p.m., and the lab was barely cleaned up. The professor started panicking, saying he still had to write lectures, do his own experiments, and then have an hour drive home, and he had to help help clean up too bad for you buster i did the same thing the next week and the professor went into full-on panic attack he told me that i could clean up early next week i told him that unfortunately the extra hours i put into cleaning for the last two weeks used up all my hours for the semester so i wouldn't be in <laughs> I heard that the next week was an absolute crap show and the other TA complained that there were they were there until almost midnight. Wow, you asked for it though. This is, you know, you had to stand up on your big platform and yell at the little TA and embarrass them in front of the class. Now who's embarrassed when they're driving home at midnight? <laughs> All right, there's an edit. Some people have been wondering why the other TA wasn't out of hours too. He might have been, but he slacked on his report on reporting his hours all semester, so he was stuck there until the end. Dum dum. Also, the professor couldn't leave us in the lab alone, so he couldn't do his experiments. And it is a biosafety level two lab, so he isn't allowed to bring his laptop in, so he can't work on lectures. He was stuck there until we were finished. Maybe, just maybe, you'll think about that next time you want to be a D-bag. Ah, oh, so maliciously compliant, so good. It feels just like honey dripping through my veins. Sorry, I'm going to stop being literary and get on to the next story. Okay, this one says only a man will do. I already have some thoughts, but let's see what they have to say. Maybe 10 years ago, I worked in tech support for a large cell phone company. Depending on the shift, we had vastly different ratios of male versus female employees. Anyhow, there was one shift where most of the floor managers as well as the shift manager for the entire office were women. I had only been working that shift a couple weeks but knew we weren't supposed to escalate or transfer to a manager unless it was really unavoidable. I get this caller who will not let me finish sentences, keeps interrupting me, eventually he demands a manager. I reluctantly transfer him and go on with my shift. Next day, Linda, the supervisor who took the call, comes to my desk and says, I need to talk about that escalation last night. I'm thinking I'm in trouble. Turns out, dude kept asking for higher supervisors and getting transferred all over the office, always to women. Finally, he loses it and goes, don't any men work there? To Paul. Paul was a wonderful, gentle guy who was also very gay. He takes over the call and in the most effeminate way possible says, hi sweetie, this is Paul, can I help? Dude immediately hung up. <laughs> I'm sorry that Paul had to pull out his effeminate side for this conversation, but I'm so glad it happened because Oh my God, you are so sexist and so full of hate that you think a woman can't help you with your tech problem? Do you know about the women who put men on the freaking moon? Not a man, a woman. And when the computers came around, they had her double check the computer's work because she was so accurate. But no, only a man will do. Oh my God. I hope you didn't get, and, and clearly you weren't helped. So I'm glad you went off and weren't helped by all these lowly women because clearly they're not good enough for you. Uh, okay, let me know what you think about that one in the comments. Don't forget we have a little playlist of Malicious Compliance Mondays up here that you can binge. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!